Hi, I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. And I'm here with Rich Schoenstein, the attorney extraordinaire and frequent guest on True Crime shows. And he's here to talk with me about the Karen Reed case. I know you want to talk about it. And there are a lot of emotions out there because you get, we get a lot of response, a lot of comments. And a lot of people think this is a big conspiracy. Well, Rich and I are going to go into that because there's some new news in the case. You have the inverted video, which is a video inside a Sally port, which involves the police work and finding uh, evidence like uh, the broken taillight and, and other sorts of things. Well, it turns out the video was inverted, meaning it was taken, it was shown to the jurors from a backwards perspective, and that leads some to think there is a conspiracy here. This is just part of the conspiracy that law enforcement is trying to cover up something they did. And also there are allegations that the video has been doctored. There's a big gap in the video. So Rich, you're, but you've are you been following this really closely. What's your take on this? Well, I have to back up a little bit just to the beginning of the week because the prosecution was having a really good week. I mean, this was a better week for the prosecution. A lot of time in this case has been spent with them defensively putting on the witnesses that the defense claims as part of this big conspiracy and cover up just to try to prove to the jury that that's not so. And this week, the prosecution actually got to what I've been waiting for, some physical evidence. They had pieces of the taillight that were found in the yard outside of, or in the driveway or street outside of Brian Albert's home. They pieced those together to show how they formed the missing taillight. They put together that as sort of a puzzle. They showed that John O'Keefe's belt really was found. His hat really was found. His supposedly missing shoe really was found. They even found the straw he was using out of the drinking glass. So the prosecution made a lot of progress. They weren't on trial every day this week. They were only on trial a couple of days. And then they got walloped because they really messed up putting on this video, Dave. And I think the problem is not the video. I think the problem is the way the prosecution presented it. And in what way? I mean, they should have just come out and say that this video was inverted. I mean, yeah, yeah. they should have pointed it out indirect testimony, right? It's a mirrored video. The way sometimes if you record a video on the computer, your left is on your right and your right is on your left, right? We've all seen that. Or certain security cameras will take images that way where they're inverted. Or when you look in a mirror, things are inverted. So that was the image. And they should have said that in direct testimony. I don't know if the prosecutor didn't realize it or if he slipped and didn't cover it, but not to point that out to the jury. They went through this whole direct spiel where they're talking about this video and they never once explained to the jury that they were looking at a mirror image. Yeah. So, what about, so what about the gap statement? in the video? Is that for real? I don't know. You know, I don't know if that's for real. I mean, I've heard a lot of chatter about it. I'm very cautious with this case because every time there's a little anything, you know, 2,000 people crawl out of the woodwork on, on Twitter and start saying the case is over, this is conclusive, this proves there was this massive conspiracy. And almost all the time, it true, proves not to be true. Like I heard for weeks and weeks, his belt was never found. Not true. I heard for weeks and weeks, his shoe was never found. Not true. I heard things about the taillight that turned out not to be true. So I hear about the gap in the tape, and that would be a concern to me uh, if it's true, but I just don't know yet. Yeah, fair enough. The, it, it is important for prosecutors to take the sting out of issues, to bring it up, and so right. it doesn't look like you're playing hide the ball, especially when you have so many allegations of corruption and a conspiracy. That's exactly where you want to come out and be totally transparent, because if you don't, and here perhaps Prosecutor Lolly made a mistake. I mean, he's the only prosecutor on this case. No, most cases have two prosecutors on the case, and he's going up against multiple defense lawyers, but he's doing this whole thing by himself. So perhaps he just forgot. He just messed up because you had to know in a case like this, 
that the defense would bring it up. And that's not who you want to meant bring it up at the trial. It makes you look bad. So I'll be willing to say it was a mistake, but that really hurts. But here's the other question. Why, if this were a conspiracy, if this were uh, planted evidence inside the Sally Port, why would they do it at the Sally Port? Why would they do it in this garage where there are cameras, where they're being watched, and not in the parking garage where this car was previously, which is dark, which has so much space where you can really do some damage in there? I mean, uh, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, you're asking very good questions. I mean, that's why I struggle with this whole conspiracy theory. The idea is that John O'Keefe was injured or died in the basement of Brian Albert's house. I've heard so many different stories. Brian Albert got in a fight. Colin Albert got in a fight. The dog attacked him. He was ganged up on. I mean, there's so many versions of that. Then the theory is they dragged him out of the back of the house, took him around and dumped him in front of the house. So why they would do that makes no sense. And now I'm supposed to believe that they got other police officers to damage a taillight, bring the broken pieces of the taillight over to Brian Albert's home, hide them in the snow, and then they called other police officers who had to come do an examination and find the broken taillight pieces. I mean, it's a little bit much. Yeah, you know, they could, the defense lawyers could have just said, this is uh, a problem with the sloppy police work, collecting evidence and yeah. red solo cups, putting them in stop and shop bags and not go there with a grand conspiracy. But it is their theory of the case. And I saw a previous video of yours, Rich, where you seem to understand why they were doing this grand conspiracy. But the drawback of the conspiracy of this frame job they're alleging is that it does uh, show the jury that uh, that they have to believe the defense to acquit in this case. So it's not just reasonable doubt. When the defense puts forward a theory, now you've got two competing theories. And if the jury rejects that theory and says, that's ridiculous, he never went in the house. There's no dog DNA on him. Why would law enforcement throw him on the lawn and say, there, there's the victim that we just killed. We're going to throw him on the front lawn when they could have just said, yeah, this was self-defense. We're all armed. He was threatening us. We shot him. Self-defense, much easier to do than this whole grand conspiracy. Because they put this out there to the jury, it now is sort of, sort of a burden shift. It does mean that the defense has to convince at least one juror that, yeah, I sort of believe in this. So perhaps it raised the level of difficulty for the defense where they didn't need to, to do that. I totally agree with that, David. And, you know, the re this is a very strong reasonable doubt case. I mean, the investigation of this crime scene was problematic, right? They're out there with a leaf blower in the middle of the night. They don't protect the scene. They don't cordon off the scene. They come back and find other stuff later. They come back again and find other stuff later. They don't interview the people in the house. The investigation is problematic. And I still haven't seen good evidence that Karen Reed backed into this guy and killed him, right? I still haven't seen evidence of why she would have done that purposefully. Now, I have seen evidence that maybe she was drunk as can be, but I haven't seen evidence that she would do it purposefully. And I haven't seen physical evidence yet that that's how it happened. So I don't understand why you just wouldn't stand up if you're to defense and scream reasonable doubt at the top of your lungs, rather than proposing that there's this grand conspiracy involving half the population of Canton, Massachusetts. Yeah, and, and along the same lines, why the prosecution wouldn't have just charged it as a manslaughter by way of getting so blasted drunk and then you drove at a high speed and killed someone unintentionally as opposed to murder because I'm with you. I don't see enough evidence to convict her on murder. This was intentional. I know they've had fights, but you know that's not enough. I, I do think the theory, at least that I'm buying, is that this was unintentional. This was they were both blasted, and they uh, just had this terrible accident. That's why when she and her friends came back to look for John O'Keefe. It was Karen who was able to find him. No one else could see him in the snow, but she knew because you know she knew what hat where she was earlier, where he could be, and that's why she was saying, "Did I hit him? Did I hit him?" And then afterwards said, "I hit him. I hit him." Now I know that's in dispute. There's a lot of uh, issues with that, but that's the evidence I've seen, and to me, the evidence shows that this was an unintentional uh, death and not one that was purposeful. But again. 
I understand where people are saying there's plenty of reasonable doubt. Uh, I'm seeing that. And the conspiracy th stuff, though, to me is taking it too far. I, I don't believe that you can have all these different people from different law enforcement agencies and people outside law enforcement all commit to this cone of silence where no one says anything different than anyone else. Mark Twain once said, yeah, two people can keep a secret if one of them is dead. <laughs> yeah. And, and listen, you know, not only reasonable doubt, but if I was the judge right now, I wouldn't let the murder charge go to the jury. Well, I don't think there's you, enough you evidence. You it. Right. You, all right. Wow. Right. There's no, yeah. Now, the prosecution's not done. They've got more evidence. And by the way, the, the famous Michael Proctor apparently is going to testify. There was a lot of speculation that he wasn't going to testify. What did that mean? Now we hear he is going to testify. People are going to watch this. And, you know, Dave, the most incredible thing about this trial is how interested so many people are in what's a relatively simple, you know, murder case. I've been fascinated by the fact that normally when a cop is killed, people rally around the police officer and his family. Yeah. It's the opposite here. They're rallying around the defendant. And the family here has endured a lot of, of abuse. And like I, I, I respect that there are a lot of people with some passionate opinions about this case, uh, but some of it has crossed the line into going after the families, the parties involved, and the people themselves who there's no indication there's nefarious activity from them. Now, with Mr. Proctor, that's where a lot of the conspiracies uh, lie. And he shouldn't have been the main investigator of this case. He, he had a connection to the Alberts. And so he should not have been the guy in charge of the investigation. And he never even went in the house, apparently. You know, that's where you would assumingly want to go if you were investigating a crime that occurred right outside the house. So uh, there were a lot of mistakes made. And that's what gives this case reasonable doubt. Yep, I agree with that. I, I to totally agree he shouldn't have been the investigator. Another of a large set of problems for the prosecution. And what you hope the prosecution doesn't do anymore are these self-inflicted wounds, like showing a video backwards and not pointing it out to the jury. I mean, that's, that's just self-inflicted at trial, hopefully. And I take your point that this is one prosecutor trying to do this on their own, on his own. Hopefully they'll get it together. Case is supposed to go to the jury by the end of June. Well, it gives us a lot of things to talk about, my friend, and we'll keep yep. following it here on True Crime MTN. Rich Schoenstein, tell us where we can find you. Well, I'm on the social media uh, at Lawful Riches on X and on uh, Instagram, and you can find uh, you can find me right here on True Crime MTN. If you look down, they even have a good page collecting all of my contributions to this channel. So there yeah, you go. And give a plug for your law firm. Oh, Tarner, Krinsky, and Drogan, New York City, Los Angeles, uh, full service law firm. Give us a call. Yep. And I'm Dave Ehrenberg here in sunny South Florida, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman. Thank you for watching us here on True Crime MTN. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. And we'll see you next time.